from Hong Kong and good morning to most of you pre-market real life and we have so much news to go through I don't even quite know where to start but it's good the morning is looking incredibly green the future is bright it's green literally Nasdaq futures are up one percent S&P also almost the same Dow Jones 0.8 percent volatility is down and lots of good things happening hopefully today so the U.S. stocks are rallying um, despite inflation hitting a 13-year high. And you know when inflation is bad, when the U.S. government hikes social security payments for 2022 by, wait for it, 5.9%. So we've got lots of uh, stuff to cover here. We're also going to look at Neo and Palantir and uh, Tesla and crypto and many, many other things. As always, feel free to ask questions. Uh, that's really what we're here for. If you haven't yet downloaded Goldman Sachs's full list of the 20 top 20 stocks and three ETFs to buy for 2022. It's not just a, a list. In fact, it's much more than that. It's uh, I've added to it all the relevant data from Ben Graham to better to operating margins, returns on capital and much, much more. And I've highlighted the things that are the juiciest, the sexiest. So uh, do download that. Otherwise, you're missing out. And um, the link is right down here below. So do do that. And what should I say? I should always say at the very beginning here, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment. And if you really want to take your own matters and your own financials into your own hands, then uh, you should, well, you should really join the Master Stocks course because that's where I give you all the templates, all the methods, all the proven strategies that build wealth in a reliable way without putting your capital at risk. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of the coupon down there and I'll be with you along the whole investment journey. Uh, so uh, that's always a good place to start. Um, now, let's run through a few items here. And of course, I'll see your questions. Uh, Jan, Felix, Kingsguard, James, Baron, uh, hello to you. Great to see you live as well, Andrew as well. Uh, so let's run through a little bit of news here. So we've got inflation at a 13-year high and literally the U.S. Social Security payments for next year are going up by 5.9%. That's staggering. And that is a blatant admission by the government that inflation is here and it's here to stay for some time. Though Kathy Woods is still on the transitory uh, scheme. She is saying that the exodus from big cities, you know, people moving more to the countryside where it's cheaper, more affordable, bigger houses and so on. She says that will help keep inflation in check. She also thinks that commodities are going to cool next year and apparently, um, apparently would if for lack of a better word here, is apparently falling. I can't see it on my lumber. It's actually up 4% this morning, so I don't really see it. I'll show it to you here. These are the futures, and lumber is still rising 4%. So it's making another rally after its August decline. But the market isn't worried. The market is just enjoying it. The market is basically focusing on earnings, and earnings were good. JP Morgan yesterday. Today, what have we got? We've got um, Bank of America. We've got Wells Fargo. Those are really the two big ones to look at. Uh, Bank of America has also put out a list, which I will share with you, but I haven't done the, the background work yet. It'll come later in the week. Uh, they have basically picked out 17 stocks that they say are winners because they are quite worried about supply chain issues and inflation. So they are more cautious than some other banks. So it'd be really interesting to see uh, how that list compares to Goldman Sachs' list down here. Uh, I actually think this is a list of really quite good stocks. I must say, I'd be happy to buy pretty much everything on that list. A little bit cautious on the energy ETFs, because that's a little bit of a cyclical thing. Uh, we have... Um, Crypto uh, flying high, uh, Bitcoin around 58,000 last time I checked. The Miami mayor is a crypto lover, and he is saying he is going to start paying the city's public employees in Bitcoin. So that's really an interesting move, isn't it? Really interesting one. And Fidelity still think Bitcoin's going to reach 100,000. If any of you are in Bitcoin, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are on price targets. Uh, oil is also rallying up. And Vladimir Putin is saying he thinks it's going to hit $100 a barrel again. Who, who knew, right? I mean, we were at like $15 or something. But he says our nation is doing its best to keep it in check. If you believe that, you believe anything because uh, Russia depends on oil sales 
they can get $100 a barrel, they will do their, their best to keep it at that level, uh, though he's telling us quite, quite the opposite. Now, the supply chain shortage is still very, very much at the forefront. It's uh, so bad, in a sense, that... Biden has to get involved and apparently, you know, he has some, some magic, some magic stick he can wave and move containers out of the way or something. I don't know what, what that's all about, really. But essentially, the US has two major ports, LA and Long Beach, right? They move 25% of all American imports. And you have a backlog there. It means all the factories and so on down the road get their stuff late. And apparently at the moment, there are 81 cargo ships each with thousands of containers that are not able to get into the port because the port is full. So imagine how many people are there for waiting for their deliveries. Lots of Christmas stuff coming in, of course. So order your Christmas things early and contribute to the shortage and the panic buying. Uh, I, I'm sure the UK is going to have a bit of a panic buying situation. They love a panic buy over there. So the question therefore really is, is that going to keep, you know, keep inflation at higher levels, probably, because people can just charge a bit more for trucking it, for example, right, and moving it, and, and, and so on. Uh, Blue Origin launched uh, William Shatner yesterday, which is a, I thought at first that's a really random move, but it's actually a really smart move. You know why? The guy's 90 years old, right? There are lots of people who are in their 70s and older who've got lots of money, who are in good health. They wouldn't mind spending $100,000 or whatever it costs to fly up there. And if a 90-year-old can do it, they'll be like, well, you can do it, I can do it. So I actually think this is a direct marketing PR pitch to the elderly. So expect a lot more OAPs, pensioners uh, floating around space uh, in the next couple of months. If we look at uh, earnings today, Morgan Stanley also. So we've got Bank of America, City. Wells Fargo and Morgan Stanley. Why do bank earnings matter so much? Because they are somewhat of a snapshot of what's happening in the, in the economy, right? Uh, we can see that with JP Morgan yesterday, who've done incredibly well, but they are at the same time putting aside tons of cash, essentially, for an opportunity. So they are, they are looking at a bit of a dip situation. We also have um, Chinese um, sort of producer inflation creeping up quite substantially, though export numbers were excellent in September. So a bit of a mixed message there. But when factory price indices in China rise, that feeds into American inflation, European inflation, just because so many components are made in China. Um, um, I saw somebody here at the top just asked about Futu. Uh, Futu, uh, Chinese stock, uh, is uh, likely, I think, on the list of uh, Chinese sort of crackdown stuff. Uh, China is really getting tough on data protection, personal data privacy, and uh, apparently that is going to affect Futu uh, because they potentially violate that and they have some compliance issues. So I, I think... Tiger and Futu and those kind of stocks might have a little bit of an ugly uh, situation here in the next couple of weeks and months, um, which is something to look at. There is also a story which I wanted to run through in a moment. It's all about chips and, and, and possibly uh, China calling TSMC a monopolist. So TSMC stock, therefore, also something that is a little bit on the uh, uh, slightly worrisome side. Now, let me show you here a couple of... Uh, bits, which is um, the jobless claims we just got in about 30 minutes ago. You see that here on the screen? We were expecting 319,000. Let's see if I can find a pen. We were expecting 300. What happened there? <laughs> um, we were expecting 319,000. We only got 293,000. So what does that mean, really? Well, less people are claiming that they're jobless. And if you then go back to the uh, last employment numbers, wherever they went, they were on the list here somewhere, and you sort of think, well, what's really happening here? Well, look, the continuing jobless claims are also down. Really, what's happening is less people want to work. I think that's really what's happening. At least less people want to work full-time employment. They are perhaps doing something on Upwork, which is, is, is better. Or maybe they're just watching this and they're investing their money. They're learning options trading and they are getting a really nice return on that, which is a, is a great thing to do, by the way. And if you, again, want to get something free and brilliant, 
for the free options course for you. It, it, it is brilliant. So do check it out. No, but seriously, with options, and I'll, I'll start to put out a few more trades so that it's more easy for everybody to understand. Um, I also share them over on the Discord if you want to get there through the Patreon. But really, um, options trading, I mean, it provides me with, with a fairly substantial income, uh, which is which I actually then reinvest, uh, I, ironically, because I don't spend it. But it, it can be a really, really good way of making money out of your portfolio, You're sort of sweating your assets a little bit harder. Uh, let me have a quick look at um, a couple of questions here as I was ranting on. Um, Noah has already bought the moon. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. Um, uh, James, I don't think China is going to attack Taiwan. That's really, really my 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 thought on that. I just don't think it's happening. It, it's uh, and Lone Wolf says the news keeps telling Americans inflation isn't here. Well, if the government gives you five point nine percent more if you're on Social Security. I I think it's fairly safe to say that there is inflation and it's going to stick around. Uh, Noah says Bloomberg is saying the Fed needs to re-anchor inflation to three percent. And yeah, I I mean inflation isn't. It's okay. Year on year, it's five point four percent. Core inflation, uh, I, I just have the monthly number here, point two percent. But I, I somewhat, I'm slightly on the fence here with this. I I fundamentally agree with Kathy that there will be a lot of advances in technology that are coming in that will lower manufacturing costs and that will lower the cost of a lot of goods for us. At the same time. I do think we are seeing a prolonged supply chain issue for chips somewhat decoupling and then the shipping lines basically taking the mickey and just charging a lot and not moving as many ships as they usually would. And for some reason, COVID and all of that has obviously caused a backlog and then you get ports and that are not functioning as well as they should and logistics and haulage issues and, and a shortage of truckers. And there's lots and lots of bits to this that do matter. And then on top of that, you now have this unexpected rise in energy costs, which we didn't think we'd ever get again because we were like, well, no one's going to need more oil, right? Everyone's moving away from using petroleum and diesels and so on. So this is, again, a bit of an unexpected one. So I think there will be parts of the economy where things will get a lot cheaper, um, a lot more advanced manufacturing, 3D printing and stuff like that, drone deliveries. All those things will make a lot of products cheaper for the consumer. But that doesn't mean that there isn't also something feeding into manufacturing like simply logistics things and moving stuff and just missing comp components that are, are going to keep us inflation up. So, you know, we might well see inflation around 4% or so for all of next year. Does that mean the Fed is going to like yank interest rates up massively next year? No, I think the Fed's pretty cautious. That's my view on that. I think we are definitely getting tapering, but I don't think we're necessarily going to get a massive, aggressive um interest rate hikes, because the last time Greenspan did that, if you remember it, uh, he basically tanked the economy. But Greenspan was a much tougher character than, than the chaps we have running the, uh, the world at present. Um, if you haven't clicked on this yet here, uh, do take advantage. It's, it's Goldman's full list. And I'll show it to you again here. It's not just the, the names of the stocks, but actually I, I uh, went through the effort of putting together everything from from margins and return on equity, cash conversion, leverage free cash flow, and everything. So you can really get a very good overview here. And I've highlighted and bolded some bits as well that I thought are most useful. So do check that out if you didn't watch the video on that. We also have um, in China, funnily enough, massive queues at charging stations. So because it's a national holiday, or it was a national holiday rather, um, People were driving a lot uh, to relatives and holidays and so on, and there were queues everywhere. So Neo's William Lee came out and said, look, it, was just, it just surprised the industry because EV adoption is so much faster than expected. And I posted something on the Discord yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, well, if you're not on the Discord, you wouldn't have. Uh, about the um, the uptake of, of uh, or the collapse, rather, of... Um, ICE sales. And let me show you that here. So I'll make this a little bit smaller and this a little bit bigger. 
Can you see this at a reasonable size? Here we go. Okay, these are September luxury car deliveries in China. BMW, uh, their 5 Series down 21%. Their 3 Series down 44%. Mercedes-Benz with their E-Class down 52%. Audi down 53% with the A4. The A6, which is a bigger car, down 78%. Volvo and so on. Cadillac down for, you know, almost 40%. So everybody who's selling ICEs is selling a lot less. And then you look at Tesla's numbers and you think, well, <laughs> what's really happening here? Well, what's happening is EV adoption is happening and it's happening faster than people expect. So if you want to get that info first, you can get there through the Patreon link as always. You should join the Patreon because it's brilliant. It's a beautiful community. You can chat with me after these calls and, and it's a, you learn a lot from that community as well. Lots of very smart people over there. Um, we also have a headline out that Neo is selling its cars at an average price, wait for this, in September of 68,000 US dollars, slightly above that, in fact. That's $18,000 higher than Tesla. And that does put it in a different category, right? So Neo, very much a premium car manufacturer, Tesla, more middle middle market. I mean, they look premium. I, I grant you that, but it's in terms of price points, it's substantial. Fifty to sixty eight thousand makes a difference. Uh, so that's kind of the the big number there, and that's also more expensive than say BMW by about six thousand US dollars. So they're doing well. I, I think it's a good brand positioning. If you the the proof of whether your branding works is if you can sell stuff more expensive than your premium competitors, and they are uh, doing that. So that's a, a, a good story. I wanted to touch briefly, and then I'll get back to your questions here on the side, talk about um, TSMC. So there is a Chinese kind of automotive newspaper, I'd, I'd call it, called CPCA, and they put out an article, in fact, I'll show it to you, here it is, saying that the shortage of chips is because there is a monopoly, uh, not because of anything else. And that worries me slightly for TSMC, because if anybody is a monopolist, it's TSMC. So that's a, a something to think about there, that we might get... Um, you know, more so the state administration for market regulation of China has investigated the monopoly of automotive chips. Uh, according to its findings, customers such as TSMC should also strictly investigate supply chain problems, improve transparency, and allow the industry to have a safe supply environment. Uh, so, you know, when you get these kind of things and uh, and it comes out like that, I mean, TSMC obviously being a Taiwanese company, but uh, still a lot of their business is in China. So I think the government's trying to put some pressure here on these guys to make more chips. Um, because a lot of the chips we're missing are super, super cheap, low-end ones, and nobody wants to make them because to build a new capacity takes apparently about 10 months because the machinery to make it is hard to get on, get to, and the actual margins on those are so poor that nobody wants to build that. Nobody wants to take that risk and build the extra plant. So that's why I think governments either need to encourage through subsidies or pressure through investigations or taxes or, or something. So I think that is is coming. So that might also help the at least the Chinese companies somewhat if, 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 if they put pressure on, on TSMC, at least in China. Um, all right, let, let's run through a few of your questions and uh, I, we will then... Um, we will then have a look at a few more news items here. Felix is saying General Electric is on the list. Yes, you are right. On this list down here, Goldman's list, actually, yes, General Electric is there at the top. It's an interesting one, really. I mean, what's good about General Electric? Well, not the greatest stock in the world, but it also isn't a bad stock. I mean, it's not one I own. Their revenue is declining. They do have free cash flow, but it's pretty moderate. Uh, but then, and their return on invested capital is like less than 1%. Uh, so it's not the greatest stock in the world. But I suppose if you are worried about inflation, owning GE is probably not a bad place to be. Uh, Lone Wolf is not convinced that 
Biden is going to fix it. <laughs> um, okay, let me go through some of the questions here. Lots of them, which I truly appreciate. So uh, Michael says, good morning, Felix. Everyone smash the like button. Save the goats. Absolutely. We keep donating to the goats. So keep doing that. You'll see it. Well, no, it didn't pop up here. There it is. You see that here? Uh, we, we are approaching $2,000 of donations to the goats. Thanks to your likes. And... And Simon thinks Americans are basically staying at home because they only make minimally more in, in, in a crappy job compared to just chilling at home all day. Uh, Ken, gladly look at so far because we've still got 15 minutes. So we look at some charts in a second here. Um, Blue Origin uh, is at 6 million, George says, per pack. Okay, thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's going to come down substantially though, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's going to be like an expensive cruise. I think it'll be like 100K or something to grab there. Lone Wolf sells milks going up. I don't drink any milk, but so I, I wouldn't have noticed. Um, uh, and Michael is basically saying that the Biden government has gone from energy independent to energy dependent, uh, which is, yeah, you, you're quite right. I mean, the US was surprisingly, suddenly, I don't know if they still are technically uh, self-sufficient in, in, in energy, um, which is which I was very surprised by, and and now we have obviously uh, energy prices shooting up again. Uh, and Cifro wants to talk about PayPal. Okay, I'll, I'll make a note here of some of those stocks, um, and we'll run through this in just a second. And Elvin's worried about the Evergrande crash. Okay, let's talk about that briefly. So we are seeing, yes, more developers uh, going against the wall. Much smaller ones, I grant you. Evergrande has missed their third bond payment. Uh, if you want to really go into that, I put a video out on that yesterday. So do check that out. It really goes into the, 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 the meat of it. What's going to happen is Evergrande isn't going to pay a thing. And they're going to wait till the last minute before default because Evergrande's only leverage with bondholders is that saying, tomorrow we're going bankrupt. Tomorrow we're out of business. Uh, good luck getting money out of Chinese insolvency courts in five years' time. Bondholders don't like that. Bondholders are going to agree to a massive haircut because most of them have bought Evergrande debt at like 20 cents and they're hoping to, you know, get 30 cents and make that 50% return in a month and then say, you know, aren't we the smart people here? So that's what the bondholders are hoping for. So Evergrande, if Evergrande were to pay some coupons now, they would just push up the prices of their bonds from 20 cents to 30 cents to 40 cents. And then they're going to have to, in the end, end up paying more to settle the whole thing. So they are going to wait uh, just like Washington politicians till the very, very last minute and then come to some sort of agreement. I, I think there will be an agreement. I think the government's going to be breathing down their neck and say, you better come to an agreement. Uh, and we are seeing uh, support from the government somewhat indirectly, but I do think it's there. I don't think China wants their offshore bond market to collapse. So therefore, I do think this is going to actually go well in the end, but there will be serious jitters in the next two weeks. Um, Patrick, Neo earnings, I think around mid-November. So I think we have a little bit of time there. Uh, we have a look at that in a second. Uh, Simon thinks that we should have a mandate for chip makers to have a certain production to lower level chips. I mean, the problem is always, Simon, when you get involved, government involved in, in, in that sort of private business, you create inefficiencies as well, right? So I, I think simply going to the guy who makes them uh, and saying, look, um, if you buy that equipment, I'll give you a, an interest-free loan for five years or something and go and buy the machinery, do it tomorrow. I think that might do the trick. Uh, so I think something like that. And I, I actually don't know if any of those lower-end chips are made in Europe or the US. I, I think it might all be an Asian job at, at present. And we're definitely going to look at Palantir in a second. Absolutely. Um, are you going to be doing some videos on options since earnings season is coming up, says Sandra? Yes, I'm going to th start throwing in more and more uh, options, also stock trades, but also options into videos because earnings season is always a really good one to do that with. Um, when are Barber earnings? Okay, we look at Barber as well, if I rate. Um, 
And Desmond is completely right, uh, Chinese bond yield. So the high yield bonds, especially the real estate bonds, uh, I, yesterday, when last time I looked, Desmond, they were at 18%, maybe they're 19 or 20 now. So that's massive. And that goes to show the risk that people see here. So let's do two things. One, we're going to look at the live pre-market, and then we're going to run through some of those stocks you've been shouting out. So let me show you what's going on here. If you haven't yet, download Goldman's list of top 20 stocks and their recommended three ETFs as well, together with all my data and research I put out on that. Uh, you, you, should, you should really download that. That's a, that's, it's a good list. It's a good place to start uh, for a portfolio. Uh, SoFi rallying up 3.8%. Bank of America. I haven't seen Bank of America's uh, earnings yet. They just come out. Bank earnings lift sentiment, Citigroup all posted higher quarterly earnings. Okay, that's good. So that's a good thing for the market. That's exactly what we wanted. That's what we were hoping for. PayPal up 2%, um, which is great. And Black NVDA, Coin, Ride, everything looking pretty good. Face Facebook is up. I told you guys on the Discord yesterday, I bought some more. If you missed that, Microsoft, I mean, pretty much everything is in the green. What is down Tiger. So Tiger uh, under under investigation, not really under investigation, but potentially in breach of Chinese data security, privacy uh, kind of law. So that's not great for them. Volatility below 20 again, which is nice to see the VIX. So it is a very, very happy green market. And so far, it's getting pumped by CNBC. I always wonder how that works. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you love to know how that works? But yes, that chap who shouts a lot said some nice things about so far, I, I hear. Um, so Elvin's asking again about the Chinese Evergrande collapse. So, okay, what happens? It's all about sentiment, really. I mean... I think Evergrande won't collapse the whole economy or the whole real estate sector. In fact, it's the kind of cleansing that you need. In the US, particularly, we no longer really have big bankruptcies, right? People are basically, governments are basically too meek to let big companies fail. And you need big companies to fail every once in a while because they're the bad companies. And then the good companies buy up the good bits of the bad company and the rest disappears. The smart people leave that company and go to other good companies and it makes the economy stronger. It makes the companies better. If you keep every dud out there on life support, which is what the Fed has been doing, you just end up postponing that kind of rubbish delay and you actually make it harder for the good companies, for example, to hire the smartest people because there is this dinosaur on life support who pays good wages. Uh, so in a sense, this is a healthy thing. This is a cleanup job. Uh, I, I think what we're going to see is the good assets being bought up by state companies and by banks and by competitors at reasonable prices. And that will allow Evergrande to have enough money to pay off foreign bondholders at, I don't know, 30, 40 cents a, a, a dollar. And everybody will be happy. Evergrande will be no more, at least not in its present um, gigantic form. And in, real estate developers will have learned a lesson. If I do something stupid... I will be allowed to go bust no matter how big I am. And I think that's the message the Chinese government is putting out, basically. They're saying, you're not too big to fail. Uh, we're going to let you fail. You're going to pay for this. And, and that's what's happening. So in terms of sentiment, as this is cleanup job is happening, it's not great because the headlines are always out. Everybody loves a crash. Everybody loves a collapse and a disaster. Uh, but I think in reality, it's probably a good time to accumulate some really good Chinese stocks. Uh, Desmond's asking about the Barber downside news. No, there hasn't really been much more uh, on that. But let's look at a couple of stocks here, uh, charts. We can start with Barber. We look at Palantir and SoFi as well, just in a second. Uh, this is what happens, by the way, if, if a developer is, is bad in China. Um, and it makes sense. <laughs> look, this is Cynic. They traded at $4, and then that was a one-day trade, down 90% in one day. So, you know, don't buy bad companies. That's basically it. And if you want to avoid buying bad companies, guess what? 
I teach you how to avoid exactly that. So check out the Master Stocks course if you haven't yet. If you're not in that community yet, do check it out. Uh, it's where I give you all the tools and templates and strategies you can implement really super, super quickly and easily without wasting lots of time and just improving your returns and in reducing your risk, reducing your volatility while making a really nice money. So do check that out. Coupons down below. Build wealth. Let me go back to this chart here. So Baba is has broken through its 50-day moving average line, which is that purple line here. So we are just ever so slightly above it. I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's not quite such a ridiculously small chart. And in fact, we could zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it. Um, now, that's great, uh, and that's a modest support, but not the greatest support. Now, earnings are in uh, on the 29th of October, according to, according to this, which is probably correct. It isn't always, by the way. Don't necessarily rely on the dates in your charts. Always check the Investor Relations website. I will live stream that uh, call, and that's going to be really interesting. Even if you're not invested in Alibaba, it'll give you a great insight into what's happening in China in terms of regulation, economy, and so on, because Baba is such a monster invested in pretty much every part of the economy uh, that I find this is always a really insightful one size fits all kind of approach to what's going on in, in, in China. Um, now, what I see from this here is that yes, we had a good day yesterday, but down here, you can see the volume was not particularly like juicy. So it's not the greatest uh, trade. So apparently earnings will disappoint. Um, if everybody expects them to disappoint, it doesn't mean the stock will sell off from it, uh, Desmond, but uh, we don't have much more data on that yet so far. Okay, let me pull up Palantir, SoFi, shout out some more that you wanted me to look at in, in a second. And the baby here has got a good question as well. I'll answer that in just one minute after we look at these two or three charts here. So Palantir having a three-day kind of recovery, really. Uh, that's really the sort of little recovery here. In fact, let me change to the Palantir chart. These charts, by the way, are again on the on the Patreon. So if you want to look at my uh, scribbles uh, longer, then in more detail, you are very welcome to do that in your own time. Or just drop me a drop me a line. Uh, you can always ask me. Um, so that was Palantir. Why did we want Baba? Palantir. Here we go. Okay. So what I've drawn in here is. It's all in purple. I, I apologize. Everything is purple. I don't know why. Uh, it seems to be my, my, my favorite color at the moment. These lines here tell us that we had one dip, we had a second longer dip, and now we had a third dip. Each of those dips is higher than the last. That's actually a bullish sign. So this is dip one, this is dip two, and this is dip three. Um, so I'm actually quite happy with that. And you can see the pattern after each dip. We shoot back up. Uh, there's always this rally. It just is the way it moves. Um, now, between dip one and dip two, the dark pool, which is about half of the trading volume, uh, was super, super negative down here. Uh, so you, you see that that here, right? That was just massively negative. And whereas now it's actually becoming a positive contributor. So provided uh, as retailers don't uh, lose our guts on on Palantir I, I do think this is gonna gonna keep keep rallying we might get one of these uh, sideways wobbles here we might just do a bit of this until we get to earnings uh, I was actually just preparing a, an earnings preview on on um, Palantir and I'll put that out uh, maybe later today or tomorrow uh, of what I expect to happen I, I do think we might get a nice little pop here we're gonna get possibly to 400 million revenue for the quarter. So that should be quite a good one. Now let's look at SoFi and then I'll take some more questions here. So don't be shy. If I miss your questions, by the way, I do feel free to ask them again. Um, you don't have to ask them a thousand times, but I, I will see them then. Sometimes there are just so many, the scrolling uh, happens with the scrolling. So what... So far, having a really, really nice momentum rally here, um, we are seeing, okay, this is what I always love. I love my new little dark pool um, indicator here. You're seeing that dark pool buy-ins, this is green volume, so it's positive, but it's still less. So they started slowing down around about here, uh, there, around about 
$15 or so. That's where they were really buying up to. And now they're buying at about half that rate. We have no idea what price points they buy at, but they're buying, uh, they're still buying, which is good news. Um, I think we have a chance of continuing this momentum, actually, because we are recovering, really, right? We are now above the 100-day moving average line, the blue line here in the background. Uh, let's pull up a couple of momentum indicators, and you see what I mean. That uh, Let's pull up momentum, for example. And momentum, what you do with that is just put a horizontal line at zero, and you can see momentum is at 3.9. That's pretty massive. Uh, that's as the best we've had since uh, sort of May uh, May this year. And in May this year, we went from basically sort of 15 to $24. So uh, momentum is looking very good, looking very healthy. So I'm, I'm quite happy here with SoFi. Uh, it is a volatile stock and isn't the cheapest stock in the world, but I think people are feeling more bullish about banking licenses and, and so on. And, and you know, definitely uh, check in on their earnings call. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, okay, what was the last stock? There was one more. I can't remember what it was. Whoever it is, do feel free to ask that again. Uh, Singapore Sling, uh, hello there to Singapore. Are JP Morgan involved in Evergrande? I don't think they are. No, maybe they have some high-yield bond traders, uh, probably, because they do a bit of everything, but in which case they're more likely to make some money, but they haven't really got exposure here. Um, Baby is asking, what sector should we put money into? Okay, well, Goldman's given you the answer on that. And Goldman's are basically saying, in terms of sectors, they're looking at industrial. So they're, they're recommending the industrial select fund. They're recommending the consumer discretionary fund and the energy select sector fund, three ETFs. And then they've thrown out a fairly mixed list of, I'd say, generally pretty decent stocks. I mean, there's stuff in there from booking uh, to um, Disney to T-Mobile to now PayPal, Visa, Amazon, uh, Nike, quite a, quite a varied range. And that's actually quite, I quite like this list. If somebody had this as their portfolio, they'd probably do relatively well. So just download it down here. Uh, I will do some more coverage because I got also the Bank of America uh, list. They are more worried about inflation. At least they are saying they are. I mean, you have to also always think what's what's in it for them when they say this stuff. But do check that out. Now, we've got 84 likes. Can we get 16 more? I like three-digit numbers. It just is much, much nicer. Jay is saying, can you check on the dark pool data on NEO? Absolutely, we can do that. Um, NEO. Okay. So indicators, it's Dix, it's what it's called, which is, um, somebody remarked it was a rather uh, appropriate term for uh, for what's going on in, 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 in the dark pool. So you see a, a really nice trend down here, which is an upward trend for once. So let me go back a little bit and, and sort of show you what, what, what this actually means if you haven't seen one of my videos on this. So what you get is you get... Here was a downward trend earlier in December, and it just showed you that they basically exited, if I can get the crazy Neo chart on one thing here, they exited uh, buying at about, at that time, $53 or so. so. They didn't take the top up to the 60s, and then they let it fall, uh, and they kept selling off until we were back down into the 30s, and they started buying again in the 30s. Um, then as we um, were in, in, in the sort of 20th of August, uh, the, the buying essentially stopped and now it really is recovering here quite substantially. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means that there is some hidden support in some volume that we don't see in the market and it makes me more bullish on NEO <laughs> because, you know, if 59% of the market is basically buying, then that's that's a good thing. Now, I don't buy just on this Dix indicator because every indicator has its, its flaws and drawbacks, but it's definitely an interesting piece of news that they are buying while NEO is sort of hovering and selling off in the mid-30s, so they think it's 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 a good deal, essentially. That's, that's the way I would look at that. Um, T 
Janice is saying, will you make a video about it? We, Joe, we'll be hosting a Twitter Lives, opening the lid on ours, Palantir Tech. Uh, Dennis, okay, that's a, that's a Twitter Live thing, is it? Um, is that what you're talking about, Dennis? Uh, Bauman says the like button is smashed. Thank you very much for that. Only one more like and we get to, to 100. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, so, uh, Jan, if you want to know about the dark pool, literally, I put a video out um, three days ago or so on, on this. So just type in Neo dark pool or go to my playlist uh, of Neo and, and you'll find it. And I take you through that in more detail. Um, it's it's a good indicator, I think. I think it's a very useful one. Uh, you can pull this up in TradingView. It's called D-I-X. Um, not, not, no, no C's, no K's in there. Uh, what are you most excited to pick for long term during the China dip, says Wasim. Well, Wasim, the thing that's hit the most is always the thing that's most famous, and that's Baba, right? Uh, Alibaba has been hit, been beaten up for the last nine months, so I quite like the look of that. At the moment, I'm selling puts on that because I can sell puts at $110, $120 and, and make some really nice return on that. Um, and if I get Barbara at 110 or 120 dollars, I'd be pretty happy. So that's kind of the strategy I'm doing at the moment. Uh, is rather than buying at these prices, because it could go down another 30 percent. I think it's possible. So therefore, I'd rather do that and 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 sort of um, earn some revenue and some income there. Uh, Anders says 100 likes done. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, yep, is talking about why is. Why does Goldman Sachs like GE? Yeah, it's it's the one on the list that I didn't highlight anything on because I was a little bit. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's cheap. I granted that price over last twelve months sales over last twelve months revenue is only one point four six. Um, but yeah, it's not profitable. Um, it's not super cheap. It's. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure why, to be honest with you. I'm not really sure on, on, on that particular one. I, I, I haven't bought General Electric. I probably won't. Uh, but I do like a lot of the other ones. I mean, I think that are looking more more healthy. Like, I think Booking, Walt, T-Mobile, Micron, Tesla, MasterCard, uh, PayPal, Netflix, AMD, Visa, Amazon, you know, uh, Caterpillar, you know, even Lockheed, Martin, and so on. I think they're all pretty decent companies, pretty good stocks. And if you look through some of the numbers here, uh, they are pretty good. If you are a value investor, then uh, Charter, Micron, Comcast, Caterpillar, and Lockheed are basically begging you to buy it. But do have a look at that as well. Um, Instant Ammo is talking about Ping An Insurance, a big Chinese insurer that Kathy Woods was buying for some time. I, at the moment, uh, China is looking into the connection between banks and the economy and financial institutions and the economy. And Insurers are financial institutions, so I'd be a little bit cautious on that. I, I, I'd rather wait out a little bit more, see what the regulation is that can, kicks in here for in, 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 uh, financial institutions. Um, Simon agrees, sell puts if you want to get on a bullish stock. Um, the BOA list, uh, Robert, I'll, I'll put out a video on that. Don't worry, Robert. You are, you, are, you are subscribed. Undoubtedly, you will get the information. I'll make a proper list and I'll share it with you uh, properly. I'll, I'll probably get to that later today or, or tomorrow. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, Jay says, thank you, Felix. Love your options course. Much appreciated, Jay. If you really want to learn options properly, um, that's really the place to go. Because not just do I not just give you all the actual strategies rather than the theory. So I tell you, these are good trades. These are bad trades. So it's really much more simple to, to therefore implement but also you get a lovely community sharing trades. Uh, I, I share with you my trades and you can talk to me, you can ask me questions. So uh, I think options trading for beginners can be a little overwhelming and that's why I made this course to really take the sting out of that uh, and not just leave you there with the bunch of theory. It's quite the opposite. So these are tradable strategies that you can implement and you can make a lot of money, especially if you have a sizable stock portfolio. Uh, you already have the key requirement for making money with options. So do check that out. Um, Desmond thinks Goldman Sachs is recommending GE for more mature, safe clients. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's probably a fairly safe stock. I mean, I don't think it's, it's, it's going to go out of business tomorrow or anything like that. They have a gross profit margin of 18%. You know, 
they're making a little bit of money, not re in real terms, but uh, free cash flow is moderately positive. It's just one of those things that kind of chugs along, but it isn't really growing. Um, it, it just, it's not something for me, I, I must say. Uh, Desmond, I, I don't know about you, but um, can we look at the markets as August? Absolutely. While I'm ranting and raving, here is the live market, nine minutes open now. Let's have a look. Um, so actually, let's have very quickly have a look at futures. So you can see brief, overall things are looking very, very green. And my head here covers up. The VIX is negative, which is always a good sign if you're bullish on stocks. And then we have SoFi leading the list here, Square up. Bank of America impressing with their earnings. That's also good for PayPal. So all the financials are being pulled up. Uh, we've got Lucid, Snow, NVDA, everything up. Basically, Palantir up 1% at 2438. Uh, Apple recovering modestly to 142. Tesla holding 816 US dollars, which is exciting. What's down so far? I mean, substantially down x pang a bit percent and a half pdd two percent down plug down four percent uh tiger 17 percent on the news that there is an investigation by the chinese sort of uh, uh antitrust body but they really are looking more at data personal privacy kind of data protection uh, and neo down one percent as well so the chinese evs and chinese stocks are basically being dragged down a little bit here by something else going on in China and a bit more regulation, the market not loving that particularly. Um, OJ is also up. Yes, if you are like me, massively into orange juice futures. That's a joke, by the way. I don't trade orange juice futures. I know nothing about it. Uh, that is up indeed. Lumber also up, which is creeping up again. So more inflation concerns there. I think gold had a fairly good day actually yesterday, right? Yesterday was up something like 2% sitting at $1,800. I don't know if any of you own any gold. Do you hold any gold, physical or otherwise? Uh, do put it in the in the chat. I'd love to know. Uh, it'd be interesting to know, actually, if any of you are into gold. So see the one-day relative performance here? Lumber, natural gas is up, outperforming everything. So if you bought a bunch of wood, you would have mo made more money than on most other things. Uh, Michael says GE's biggest thing is selling jet engines to Boeing and others and there's a huge market in for the parts and the maintenance and the after sales. I, I, I get that, Michael. I get that business model. Uh, for example, I, I love a lot of um, elevator and, and, and escalator stocks for that reason because those after sales contracts are juicy. But when you look at GE's numbers, it's not all that juicy, right? So they're obviously doing some other things that are not doing too, too fantastically. Um, okay, Desmond, as a good Hong Konger, you have to have some physical gold, right? It's basically a requirement. When you enter here and you get um, your, your permanent residence, they basically say to you, now you have to go buy gold. I, I'm kidding, but it's very much part of the culture, uh, as it is in, in many countries. Uh, investigator has some digital gold. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, so let's run through a couple more things here that I think were interesting headlines. If you have just joined us, you can either go back to the beginning or wait for my recap in just a moment. Um, the Bank of England, which not as impressive and enormous as the Fed, although it's a very impressive building, and they have a lot of gold in there. I've been in there. You can pick up some gold in, in there, which is very nice to handle. Uh, they, The Bank of Deputy Governor of the Bank of England has said that he thinks a crypto collapse is plausible and it would basically cause a 2008 style market crash and asking and begging for urgent regulation. So I think what's going to get regulated is um, DeFi is going to get regulated and stable coins. I think those two are really on, on, the, on the radar here because one is essentially a, a peer-to-peer lending business and the other is, is a currency, right? So that's, I think, those two parts of crypto, I think, are going to get, get clamped down on somewhat. Not necessarily a bad thing, but in the short term, it's going to cause some uh, hiccups. On that note, the US has overtaken China in what? Bitcoin mining. Yes, a third of the world's global hash rate is now in the US um, because China cracked down on it. Also, 
if there's no electricity or not enough in China, China, China definitely doesn't want to have crypto mining here. Though I, I am still of the opinion that China is going to allow crypto trading. It's just the way to get into it will be only through the centralized blockchain currency of the Chinese government, the, the E. CNY. Uh, and that way they know what's going in, they know what's coming out. So that's really what they're concerned about. So I do think that's going to happen. And there will likely be limits on that, just like with money transfers abroad. Um, why do I say that? Because in the central bank, there is a division that has filed about 130 patents on crypto. And one of the most recent ones is on, on crypto trading. So I think they realize they can't really stop trading, but they want to regulate it. They want to have some control on this. And so that's really why they're doing that. Um, there is also a, a an interesting chart here. Some websites I follow sometimes, some algo trading websites. Um, they are basically saying that the spread change that we've got here on the chart. So the... Um, the U.S. Treasury spreads here, moving from 185 down to, uh, what is that, 168. Apparently, that implies uh, a 90% likelihood of a rate hike in 2022. Now, I'm no bond trader, so I have to take their word for that, but I thought it's interesting to throw that out. That's what the market seems to be um, forecasting. Um, do make sure you download Goldman's list of the top 20 stocks and also three ETFs for 2022. I think it's a good list. It's not just a list of stocks. If you haven't seen it, here it is. But I added to it um, lots and lots of data, anything from margins to valuations to lots and lots of things that are very, very useful when assessing stocks and that I look at when I, when I buy and sell stocks. So do check that out. Uh, let's do a quick recap and then we'll look at some more questions here if there are any. What have we got? What have we got in stock today? Well, 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 we had some jobless claims data out and I'll show it to you again. Here it is. So we have continuing jobless claims. We were expecting 2.67 million. We got under 2.6 million, 2.59. So it's coming down quite a bit. And you see that chart down there? So that's that's not the unemployment number. That's the jobless claim. So people are not claiming job joblessness. That's not the same thing as employment going up. It just means people can't be bothered to go and work. We also have the producer price index, PPI. Look at that. So if you still think there is no inflation for manufacturers, well, that sort of seems to say the opposite. Now, it is slightly lower than or well, consensus was 8.7. We got 8.6. It's sort of on target, but it's still higher than it was last month. So it's growing still at half a percent a month. So there is a at least a short-term concern about inflation that isn't going to go away. And on that news, the United States government in its unlimited generosity is upping social security payments by a whopping 5.9% in 2022, which to me says they know inflation is here to stick around for some time. So that's the inflation story. Uh, there are, of course, things you can buy that are more inflation secure than others. Growth stocks are a little bit more volatile to inflation. Um, stocks with lots of free cash flow, great big margins and big moats, which means pricing power moats will do best. So there are things that you can buy that you buy every day that you still buy if they're 50 cents more or $20 more or whatever. So say an apple, for example, uh, not not the green one, but the, that the uh, <laughs> you know, apple, the stock, apple, they obviously have pretty good pricing power because they're selling a $1,000 phones. If it's $1,030, are you still going to buy it? Yeah, probably, because you just can't help yourself, right? So that's uh, the, the story on that. Uh, the market, though, super, super happy with the big banks today reporting. Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo reporting all good earning numbers, which you would kind of expect given how much stimulus there is out there. You'd kind of think that banks would do well in this situation, and they have. We um, had a bit of other data. We looked at um, we looked a little bit at crypto. We looked at um, Bitcoin rallying. Miami, apparently, the mayor says we're going to start paying our government employees in, in Bitcoin, which would definitely help Bitcoin. Oil is heading towards $100. Let me see where I've got it on here. 
And I'll share it with you if I have it. Crude oil at 80.90. And let me show you that chart. That's a good chart, right? If you'd gotten in in, in August from 60 to $80 in, in a month, that's pretty impressive. Uh, Vladimir Putin, though, is reassuring the world. He says, don't worry, folks, it's all going to be all right. Uh, we, are, we think it's going to go to 100, but we're going to do our best to keep it below that. So if you believe that, you believe really uh, absolutely anything. And um, what else have we got on here on the list of super important things? Uh, William Shatner has been to space, which is obviously a shattering news, earth shattering news. And supply chain, so Biden met with a lot of the big logistics companies, people like FedEx, UPS, and Walmart. Yes, Walmart really is a logistics company because uh, the ports like Long Beach and so on uh, have massive back backlogs. 81 cargo ships are apparently stuck in, in front of those ports in the Pacific and they can't unload. And get, guess what the solution is? They're going to work 24-7. When I read that, I was just like... <laughs> How does a port not work 24-7? What major port in the world doesn't work 24-7? Like it's it's of course it works 24-7. Why wouldn't you? The cost of the ship sitting there overnight, that's madness. Absolute madness. So yeah, I mean, I think we really need, do need some Tesla robots on those ports if people are not willing to work. I mean, most work and labor in ports is done by by automated crane type drone sort of robots, essentially, right? Very few people require that you need some technical people there, some supervision, but that's pretty much all you need. You don't actually need a lot of people. And the crew on the ships are working anyway. So um, staggering that the largest port in the United States wasn't working good 24-7 before. Uh, that should help somewhat. So, um, you know, Biden to the rescue. <laughs> um, who would have thought it would require Biden to step in and that that would actually achieve something? So that's the, um, hopefully that will ease things as we head into Christmas with lots of um, stuff here. Um, what's Desmond shouting out here? 99.90. Thomas said, I was laid up for my last job and yes, they gave me money and I put it all in stocks. Well, well done, Thomas. Fantastic. And hopefully you have a better more exciting life now. Uh, Noah thinks that Palantir is inflation-proof. Companies and governments won't stop using them, period. I think, Noah, you have, a, you have a point. If your growth stock is growing substantially more than inflation, then inflation also becomes less of an issue. Uh, it just might momentarily impact valuations a little bit. So um, you might get the pre more depressed valuations than you would have otherwise gotten, say, the next three or six months. It doesn't fundamentally change the story of Palantir, which, no, well, you know, I am bullish on. Um, and Desmond says the Docker workers' unions won't let them work those hours. Yeah, this is, I mean... Unions can be very useful, but it can also be completely in the way. And I remember many years ago, I visited a car plant in the UK, which was General Motors owned. And I visited, walked around the plant and saw what they were doing. And I thought, is this what grown-ups do for work? There were workers sitting there and they have a chair, they have a cup of coffee, they have a, had a newspaper and a table next to them. And I think it was like every three minutes, an engine block would move in front of them super slowly. And they would literally take one screw or one part, put it in, turn it, turn around, have some more coffee, go and read the newspaper. And I was like, what's going on here? And they had a, they had a union agreed time frame for how many things they could do in an hour. So they could only do one every three minutes or whatever it was, which would meant they were doing nothing most of the time. And because the job was so monotonous and boring, they get rotated every 15 minutes, which again caused another five minute break or something. And I was just like, oh my God, how can you make things like this? So that's not really helping anybody. I don't think it makes anybody's job more exciting, but that's what happens in some, in some union places. SM says, is there a hint of a UK accent in there, Felix? Uh, I, I don't know. It's a strange accent. I, I lived in the UK for about 10 years, but I, I am German, hence this strange twang. Uh, investigators asking about plug. I'm afraid I haven't changed my opinion on plug. I, I still don't get any of the charging stocks, and there are many out there. You know, I, I just still look at it as a petrol station. And a petrol station is not something I'd invest in, um, at least not as a stock. 
uh, because it has a 1% to 2% margin and they generally make their money out of selling Kit Kats and KFCs, the retail side, not about charging charges. And most charges I see don't seem to have retail. Uh, what, what's that all about? That's where the money is. So there might be money pouring in from the government and subsidies and in the excitement they have a time period where there's a shortage of charges and they can get away with charging a premium for electricity but eventually there will be surely a, a, be a race to the bottom that's the way I, I look at that so I, I'm not buying it um, Peter's asking about PayPal whether the pending lawsuits affect the stock price maybe a little Peter but I, I don't think in the long run that really affects earnings so I, I am bullish on PayPal uh, continuously chats asking about Visa and MasterCard I think they are both tremendous companies both companies have an operating margin of nearly of about a hundred percent so you know that's pretty good massive free cash flow dominant market position huge branding power and growing and growing and growing so i i i personally have lots of visa i don't have mastercard because it sort of doesn't make sense to have both because what's the advantage i have to listen to two earnings calls and, and follow two stocks so i just picked visa for whatever reason some years ago and i've stuck with it but i think they're both great stocks um, and yeah, okay, we're talking about unions. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if that's how they are sort of protecting, then it doesn't really make much sense. Um, Daniel said, used to work at Ford. Okay, super interesting. Great history, but so much red tape, almost impossible to fundamentally change anything. Um, yeah, and, and that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, we are talking about that earlier. Should the government, you know, mandate chip manufacturers to do certain investments? When you do that, you basically stifle investment. Somewhere down the road, you stifle, uh, sorry, innovation. And that's the problem if unions get hold too much. Um, they work for themselves. Um, okay, you guys are not, it's not exactly a pro-union community here, is it? SM is asking, we're talking about oil. Well, at $80, uh, most US oil drilling makes sense again, right? I mean, at $100, it's a total no-brainer. Uh, now, the Saudis get oil out of the ground much, much cheaper than the US does, which is why we've seen a, you know, a drop-off of production in the US. But with oil at $80 and going to $100, if you believe Putin, then uh, I, I do expect oil production in the US to pick up massively. Um, Uh, Robert is talking about okay, so companies like Accenture, which at one point were um, were consulting companies, right? At one point they were auditing companies, and then you know something happened there. Enron happened. Uh, they uh, yes, they are essentially now sort of project outsourcing consulting companies. Um, I don't know. I've never bought any of them. I always prefer to go to the product that they are selling. You know what I mean? So Accenture is a partner of Palantir, for example. I'd rather buy Palantir than Accenture because I can kind of understand that. What Accenture does exactly, I'm not entirely sure. I, I have lots of friends who are consultants. I still don't know what they do. They've explained it to me and I'm still none the wiser. So, um, <laughs> Okay, lots more comments here on, on how unions are not your favorites. Um, uh, Justin enough says, I love unions. They're holding back productivity in the competitors of my investments. Okay, that's a nice way of looking at that. So you're talking about EVs, right? Uh, and how they're holding back Ford and so on. Okay, my lesk is asking a tax question here. You says, if you have a hundred thousand December 30... Is that an options call you have? Can I put it all into stocks or you just have that amount of money to defer paying taxes on those hundred thousands that year? I, I need to know a lot more about that and I'm afraid I might not be able to answer that question. But do feel free to drop me a line at felix at goatacademy.org. I'd be glad to chat that through with you. Okay, investigator saying I'm missing the point here on plaque. You are the first one to actually give me some... Uh, some uh, facts on that. I appreciate that. Green hydrogen. Okay, I I'll gladly look at that as well. Again, if you want to shoot me an email over, if you have anything on that, I'd love to look at that. Uh, 
this is, you know, the whole community here is not about Felix is right. Uh, Felix loves to be wrong because it means I learned something. So I'd love it. If you have any thought, uh, any info on plug there on hydrogen, do, do send it my way. Um, okay. I, I love Desmond's here, the, the consulting uh, analogy. That's a funny one. Uh, Ryan Walgreens, no, I'm not sure why they are falling 4%, but you know, often it's more about expectations than um, than actual numbers, right? So let me show, let me pull it up here, Walgreens. They've had a reasonably good time, but yeah, they are kind of falling off here. I expect there is some disappointment. But they beat estimates. Okay, let's see what they've put in here. You know what I would do? I would seriously um, read their their results, and I'd also listen to the earnings call. It might be that they put something in there about, you know, because COVID is phasing out. Maybe they have forward looking a little bit less of a rosy picture or something like that. The, the, certainly, this summary statement here from Reuters doesn't tell us all that much about it. Um, or Desmond says maybe logistics or something. Yeah, or, you know, maybe it's just they've had a pretty good uh, COVID time, right? I mean, look at the chart here. Uh, 2020 March, we sort of went down November. And then from November onwards, we've had a pretty nice rally, right? Up $20. So perhaps Walgreens, we're, we're a little bit more cautious on what's what's to come in the, in, in the future. And I, I don't know. I, I'm speculating here. On that note, um, if you want to understand how to analyze those things and how to like read earnings and learn the most out of options calls, and, uh, sorry, earnings calls and so on, Master Stocks is really the greatest place for that to be. If you're not yet in that community of learning and applying tested and in, in, in successful strategies for your portfolio and how to build a successful portfolio, do check it out. Um, coupons down below, build wealth, because that's what I want you to do. I will be along with you on that journey. And we also touched on options quite a bit here. Earning seasons is always a beautiful season for options trading. So if you really want to learn how that works, which I would really, really recommend because it's just such an easy and wonderful and low risk way of making money, then the master options course up here is the place for that. Again, I give you all the strategies that you can implement. So you don't have to like trawl through all the theory and figure it out. I actually tell you which option strategies work and which ones don't. And again, get a community with that. You can talk to me, you can talk to us and and I'll be there along the whole way with you. So you, you won't be alone in that. And uh, it's a really good way of earning some extra, extra money. So take advantage of that. Links are up here. They're also down below in the description as always. And make sure you take advantage of the 29% coupon uh, when you do join. I truly appreciate you joining and I look forward to seeing you on the next live, which will be tomorrow, same time, same place. Uh, if you enjoy these live streams, do tell your friends about it. Do share the links, post it, tweet it, wherever. Uh, that would be also much appreciated to help our community grow and uh, become more sustainable. And I look forward to seeing you in the course programs.